Hi, welcome to part one of our deep guide to retinoid series. In this video, we answer the broad questions, what are retinoids, how do they work, and what do they do? In part two, we're going to show you the changes that take place at the cellular level when you start applying retinoids on the skin. In part three, we'll answer which retinoid is the best, and I'll explain why retinaldehyde, also known as retinal with an A, is our favorite retinoid here at Maylove. And finally, in part four, we'll discuss how long it takes to start seeing results. If you're new here, my name is Jackie, and I'm the CEO and Chief Product Obsessor here at Maylove. What are retinoids, and how did they become a popular skincare ingredient? Retinoids are a family of vitamin A-related molecules. Retinoids are famous for their skin benefits and are considered one of the best and most effective anti-aging ingredients that additionally can fight acne and hyperpigmentation. They also play vital roles in many critical bodily functions, from healthy vision to embryonic development. Remember how your mom used to tell you to eat carrots because they're good for your eyes? That vision benefit comes from the beta carotene in the carrots, which is also a vitamin A related compound. And it's beta carotene's yellow orange color that gives carrots its bright colors. You might have noticed that retinoid products tend to be yellowish. It's because retinoids tend to also have that bright yellow orange color. Retinoids are even used for cancer treatments. Orally taken tretinoin, a retinoid, has been shown to be effective for treating leukemia thanks to retinoids' ability to regulate cell growth cycles. In skincare, as a topically applied product, tretinoin became the first retinoid to be approved by the FDA in 1971 for the treatment of acne. You may have heard of it under its brand name, Retin-A. Interestingly, once topical tretinoin became available to the public, patients using it to treat their acne started noticing improvements in their overall skin condition. Further, studies soon followed and in 1995, tretinoin was approved by the FDA for the treatment of sun damaged, prematurely aged skin. Other popular topical skincare retinoids you've probably have heard of are retinol with an O and retinaldehyde, commonly known as retinal with an A. If you're treating acne, you may also have heard of isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, Adapalene, also known as Differin, and Tazeratine, also known as Tazeric. In this video, we focus on popular anti-aging and anti-acne topical retinoids. So when we say retinoids in this video, we are specifically referring to retinol, retinal, and tretinoin. Note that retinoic acid and tretinoin are interchangeable terms. What can retinoids do for my skin? And how do they work exactly? Consistent use of retinoids has been well proven to help keep your skin healthier, which is why dermatologists love retinoids so much. Now, let's dive deeper into how retinoids work, one step at a time. So once applied and absorbed into the skin, retinol and retinal must first be converted into retinoic acid. First, retinol gets converted into retinal. Then, retinal gets converted into retinoic acid. So retinol is two steps removed from retinoic acid, while retinal is just one step removed. And enzymes drive both of these conversion processes. It's hard to overstate the importance of enzymes because the dependence of enzymes determines whether retinoid is actually beneficial for the skin. For example, Beta-carotene, when ingested, is converted into retinal by enzymes that are present in the cells in the gut lining. However, these enzymes that can convert beta-carotene into retinal are not present in skin cells. For this reason, beta-carotene cannot be converted into retinoic acid in the skin. This is why you can't just rub carrot juice onto your skin and expect to get any benefits. Once retinol or retinal is converted into retinoic acid, it then activates our skin cells to power the regeneration cycle. To be more specific, the sequence goes something like this. First, retinol or retinal is applied on the skin's surface. Second, retinol or retinal penetrates into skin cells through the cell membranes. Retinoids are lipophilic, which means fat soluble, so retinoids are able to diffuse through cell membranes, which are also made up of lipids. Third, once retinol or retinal get inside a skin cell, enzymes help convert retinol into retinal, 
then retinol into retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is the same thing as tretinoin. And step four, retinoic acid then hitches a ride on a transporter protein called cellular retinoic acid binding protein. This protein's job is to transport retinoic acid into the cell nucleus. Retinoic acid, once it enters the cell nucleus, attaches to special receptors called RARs and RXRs, which stand for retinoic acid receptors and retinoid X receptors. So basically, think of these receptors in the cell nucleus like USB ports on your computer or phone. You plug in a right device and that unlocks a whole host of functions and activities. Once RAR and RXR receptors are activated, a chain of biological events are then unleashed that leads to more vibrant skin. Retinoids can plump up the skin by empowering skin cell regeneration. Here's how. Retinoids plump the skin by upregulating the C gene transcription factor, which is necessary for proper division and proliferation of cells. Cell proliferation means the cell's growth and division into two cells. It is a technical term to describe the creation of more cells. And transcription factors are proteins that can selectively activate your DNA to make more of specific proteins. They can launch a cascade of signals that leads to greater cell proliferation. This upregulation of C gene transcription factor by retinoids directly stimulates an increase in the number of epidermal skin cells, which leads to increased thickness of the epidermis layer of the skin. You can think of your skin as being composed of two main layers, the epidermis and dermis. Epidermis is the outer layer that protects your body. Epidermis has an outer waterproof layer called the stratium corneum, so a cracked and leaky stratium corneum will lead to a dry skin. An epidermis contains melanocytes, which produces melanin, which in turn protects you from UV rays. The epidermis also contains immune cells called Langerhans cells, which helps to protect against infection. So think of the epidermis as your main line of defense. And it is a great thing to have a thicker epidermis because it means that you have a more robust defense against the environment. The dermis is the inner layer. The dermis contains blood vessels that provide nutrients for the skin, sweat, and oil glands, as well as roots of the hair follicles. And crucial proteins like collagen and elastin are also in the dermis. These are proteins that lift up and give structure to your skin and give it the bounciness. Here, we have a figure reproduced from Kong and colleagues' 2015 study. Application of topical retinoid, even a relatively weak version of 0.1% retinol, shows notable increase in epidermal skin thickness that you can see in the blue staining. You can also see an increase in procollagen, which is a precursor to collagen in red staining within the dermis, the layer under the epidermis. More pro-collagen means more collagen, generally speaking. By the way, we have a whole dedicated deep guide to collagen video. I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. Retinoids can improve blood flow to the skin. Here's how. Another happy outcome of the retinoid-fueled rejuvenation of the skin is increased proliferation of endothelial cells, which are the cells that form the lining of blood vessels. And here in the figure reproduced by Xiao and colleagues study, you can see that application of a topical retinoid for even just one week led to the proliferation of endothelial cells as indicated by red staining. More blood flow to the skin means increased nutrient delivery and improved skin color and tone. Retinoids boost collagen in the skin. Retinoids boost collagen in the skin and other important structural proteins like elastin. Collagen is like scaffolding for your skin. It provides a structural support that holds your skin up and reduces sagginess. And the last in is like lycra in your leggings. It allows your skin to have that bounciness and elasticity. So, improving collagen and elastin content in the skin will lead to improvements in wrinkling in both aged and sun damaged skin. In this figure from Xiao and colleagues' study, you can see that the application of a topical retinoid for even just one week significantly increases pro-collagen production. 
by three times compared to the placebo. Xiao and colleagues also found that application of retinoids resulted in a four-fold increase in elastin, which is shown in the red stain. And these increases in collagen and elastin will directly lead to less wrinkled and more bouncy skin. Retinoids can treat acne. Specifically, retinal has a unique antibacterial power. So retinoids combat acne in two key ways. First, retinoids help keep the pores clear. So how does this work? Retinoids help regulate the shedding of skin cells, a process called desquamation, within the pores with oil-producing glands. This can prevent the formation of clogged pores that leads to acne. And second, retinoids help decrease the activity of enzymes involved in sebum production. That's why some people who do not have acne issues might find retinoids sometimes drying. I want to highlight here that retinaldehyde, retinal with an A, has antibacterial properties as a bonus attribute that is unique among the retinoid family. How is that so? Retinal has a special chemical structure that makes it very reactive, giving it strong antibacterial properties. And to be more technically specific for those of you who love knowing the details, the retinal is highly reactive due to the presence of the aldehyde group in the isopretinoic lateral chain of its molecular structure. So how do we know that retinal works for acne? Here is a head-to-head -head comparison study conducted by Pacher and colleagues. They tested 0.05% retinal and 0.05% retinoic acid to see how they performed against bacteria. And the study showed that 0.05% retinal treatment for two weeks led to a decrease in the density of acne-causing bacteria, called P. acnes. But on the contrary, 0.05% tretinoin had no effect on reducing P. acnes density. So, if addressing acne is a key concern, then using retinal is a no-brainer. Retinoids can also help with hyperpigmentation. Wait, we're not done just yet. There's even more that retinoids can do for your skin. Retinoids can improve hyperpigmentation as it conveys that benefit via a few different mechanisms. We'll go over these mechanisms just briefly for now. We'll make a separate video on hyperpigmentation where we go much more in depth. First, retinoids can help treat hyperpigmentation by impeding the spread of melanin from melanocytes, the cells responsible for producing melanin. By slowing down this melanin transfer, retinoids can help to reduce the appearance of dark spots. Second, retinoids can lower the production of tyrosinase, an enzyme that powers melanin production. This means less melanin is made, helping to lighten dark spots and improve hyperpigmentation. Third, retinoids accelerate cell turnover, which means that the pigmented cells shed more quickly, which also helps to lighten dark spots over time. Treating hyperpigmentation is generally more effective when retinoids are used in combination with other ingredients. This is because different ingredients can exert influence in different and complementary ways. The retinoid hydroquinone combination can diminish hyperpigmentation even more effectively, as can retinoid glycolic acid, retinoid arbutin, and retinoid vitamin C combinations. We'll cover all this much more in depth in a future hyperpigmentation video. So to summarize, retinoids are one of the best, most effective anti-aging ingredients that additionally can help fight acne and hyperpigmentation. One thing we want to mention is that all retinoids should be avoided during pregnancy and breastfeeding, and watch our pregnancy videos for more information on that. And as always, wear sunscreen when using retinoids, particularly in the first few weeks, as this is when retinoids increase sun sensitivity. That's it for today's video, the part one of Deep Guide to Retinoids. In part two, we're going to show you the changes that take place at the cellular level when you start applying retinoids on the skin. Thanks for watching, and if you like this type of content, make sure you like and subscribe. And don't forget to check the links below for related content. Thanks, and see you next time.